Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and the other day Apple released macOS Sonoma 14.2 RC. This should be the final release that's released to the public a little bit later, but is available for developers and public beta testers now. This was released alongside many other updates with iOS 17.2 RC and all of the other updates we expect very soon. This came in at 2.68 gigabytes. That's on my MacBook Pro 16 inch M1 Max. Let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to the Apple, go to about this Mac. And as you can see, if we click on Mac OS Sonoma 14.2, the final build, if there's no additional issues should be 23C63. So this should be the final one released to the public, but they could have an RC2 if they find additional issues. Now the first new feature has to do with wallpapers and now wallpapers aren't super exciting. We got a ton of those last time and we had hundreds in fact added with the last update, but now they've actually added the updates for the recent iMac introduction along with the new MacBook pro. So we have the pro black here. We have the hello metallic silver metallic blue purple to go along with all of the different iMacs that Apple released. So you'll see all of those here and they're available now if you're using this update and this is not on one of the newer MacBooks, So you should have this on all of them. So it's great to see them bring that to all of them. Let's go ahead and switch back here. There we are. And if we go into music, Within music, we have a new update here on the left with a favorite songs playlist. This is actually all of the songs you favorited. They'll show up here and they just show up as another playlist. If you want to use this. Additionally, if we go up to music and then go to our settings, you'll see there's a new option for use listening history, use listening history and Apple music can actually be disabled. So in a focus, your music you listen to does not appear in recently played or influence your recommendations. So if you don't want that to happen, you can disable that. And it actually says something a little bit different here compared to Apple's notes where music played on this Mac will appear in recently played replay mixes, influence your recommendations. And if you set up an Apple music profile, it will also also be seen by your followers. So you can disable that if you don't want that. If we go into system settings, scroll down to the control center and under control center, you'll see that we have a new option for music recognition. It's using Shazam and we can show it in the menu bar or control center or both, and then click on it and you'll see it here. Click and you'll see your history of what it's recognized and then click the little icon and it will start listening. It will use your max microphones or also AirPods if you've got those connected. So if you want to use that, you can, or you can just continue to use your iPhone, but it depends on what you care to use this on. It's available here as well. Weather gets an update here, similar to what we have on iOS. If we go into the weather app, once it loads here, and if we scroll down, you'll see it looks pretty much the same. However, we now have forecasts not only for rain, but also how much rain we're expecting to get. So if we click on Sunday here, you'll see it's expected to rain here and it shows 60% and it also gives the precipitation total and it shows over the next 10 days. So 1.4 inches of rain is expected that day. Additionally, there's a wind map snapshot. So you have your wind map here. If you go in, you've got all sorts of detail. So scroll down, you'll see all of that. And additionally, we have a moon phase calendar. So within the moon phase, scroll down, you'll see the different calendar that aligns with different moon phases themselves. And you can see that here. So they've added that just like they have on iOS. Additionally, there's some new weather widgets as well. So if we go ahead and add some under weather widgets, we have three new ones, just like we do on iOS. So we have details, we have daily forecast and sunrise and sunset. So if you want to use those instead, you can use those. And I think they look really nice. Give a little additional information instead of wasting some of that space. So if you want to use it, it's available in this update. The clock gets an update as well. So some people that use the clock regularly, this will be a nice update for you. If we go down, open the clock here, go into our timers, we can set multiple timers in this update. So we've got the little plus here. We can do a custom timer. We can also name the timer, new timer. And then we can set it to whatever we have for our sound that we want and then hit start. So 15 minutes, it started there again, we can add another one and let's add another timer and then start. So you've got both of them running at the same time. That's a new feature here.
You also have timer presets as well. So if we go ahead and click the plus button, we've got presets of one minute all the way up to one to two hours, and we can just click one hour and it will start that timer. Also, if we cancel this, you'll see recents below that show the recent ones we've used. So if you want to use timers a lot, you finally got multiple timers on Mac. Now, again, just like on iOS, PDF forms get an update where it will auto recognize certain fields and allow you to auto fill that if you have relevant information. So you have everything here with auto fill. We can fill it with contacts, passwords, locations, and more. So that's now available if you're using a Mac or on an iPhone or iPad with 17.2 RC or 17.2 once it releases. Messages also get some updates and within messages, we have an arrow so we can catch up to a conversation. So maybe we just have a long string of conversations from multiple people within a group text. It will actually bring us back to where we left off. You'll only see that though, if you have quite a few of them, I'm not sure of the actual threshold as it seems to be well over 20 of them or so. Also, if we option click or right click, we can add a sticker directly from that menu. So whether that's an emoji or you have other stickers here, this Apple watch, you can add it directly just by option clicking or right clicking instead of going into your menus and then your stickers. Additionally, we have contact key verification. This is something that allows you to verify someone you're speaking to is who they say they are. You can set this up. If you go into your settings under your Apple ID at the top, and if we scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see contact key verification. We can enable this, but it will require all our devices to be updated to the latest version. You'll see it says contact key verification allows you to manually verify who you are messaging with by comparing contact verification codes in person or over the phone. If you click continue, it's going to check your different devices and make sure you can enable it. So again, you'll have to update many devices to make sure these are updated in order to have it on all of them. Back within our system settings, if we scroll down to keyboard, within keyboard, if we go to text input, click edit, and then we go to add maybe a different language or keyboard, there's new support for SAMI. So if we type in SAMI, you'll see it here where we have a bunch of different options now where we didn't before. There's seven additional SAMI languages. So those are available in this update. Now, as far as bug fixes, Apple has not said that they've resolved any issues here. Now, I haven't had many issues with it. I've been using this along with all of my different regular apps and really haven't run into any issues. So far, it doesn't seem that there's any really going on. But again, it takes time to figure out if we're having those issues. As far as performance and everything else, Final Cut Pro and everything so far has been good. But again, it could show some issues maybe in a few days or so. If we go down to battery, since we're on a laptop and this is a couple years old, I thought I'd share this since many ask. If we go into our settings, you'll see I'm down to 99% battery capacity. This is typically plugged into a Mac studio display. It has optimized battery charging enabled and it's normal as far as the battery conditions. So it's actually got quite a few cycles on it. If we take a look at that, we'll go into our settings here under power. You can see here that we have 30 cycles as far as the battery goes. Now that's not very many, but I typically leave this plugged into a display, a studio display or pro display XDR as I used it to edit for quite a few years now, since it's been released. And this has actually been used since day one. So no issues whatsoever, leaving it plugged in. It seems to be doing fine with that. Let's go ahead and close that out. And as far as anything else, well, we are expecting some security updates. And on Apple's security website, you can see here, there's no information about the latest RC release. Apple typically updates this after they release it to the public. And I would expect that probably on Monday or Tuesday around December 11th or so. That's typically what they do. So we could expect this fairly soon. And that's really everything so far in this update. There's little changes here and there I'll cover in the what's new video and we'll see if we have an RC2 as well. Let me know if you found anything else significant in this update in the comments below, and I'll link an iPhone version of this wallpaper in the description as well. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.